Hey friends, Pastor Chris here with today's gold nugget from God's Word. Today I'm going to look at Revelation chapter number 12, verses 1 through 5. We're going to look at the central characters in the Great Tribulation. So let's begin reading and let's read through those first five verses there in chapter 12. There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve, of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. A, behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head, upon his heads. And his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to de devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was called up unto God and to his throne. So let's think about this for a moment. Here we're seeing what lies between heaven and earth, behind all sin, behind all evil, conflict and struggle, all those things that are in the world. And, and we're going to see what what lies between all that? What causes all of that? We see three different characters here. We see the woman with child. We see the great red dragon. And we see the man child. Now let's talk about who those are. The woman with child. If you go back to Genesis chapter 37 verses 9 through 11, you'll see the dream of Joseph. And in that dream, it gives us an understanding of, of who this woman with child is. Uh, we see the sun is being the father Jacob. We see the moon as being the mother. We see the 12 stars being the brothers, including Joseph, which the dream is really a picture then of Israel. And Israel would be saved through Joseph. Uh, here she is pregnant with a child to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And that would be, in verse number 5, that's a picture of Jesus Christ who would rule the world with a rod of iron. If you read the rest of it, it says her child would be called up to God and to his throne, ruling all the nations with a rod of iron. So that's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So who is the woman then in this scripture? We, we were saying that this is Israel. That's, that's most likely. But others say that this is talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. But there's too many supernatural things going on for it to be Mary. Some believe that this is the church. But you have to realize the church did not give birth to Christ. Christ gave birth to the church. Some believe this is the true people of God, meaning the ideal Jerusalem. The ideal of Zion, Israel, the chosen people, the community of, of God from which Christ came. Some believe that to be it, but that doesn't seem likely. But most likely, it would be Israel, which we have pointed to here through reading the, the understanding of, of Joseph and the dream that he had. Um, so she's pregnant with a child to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. That's talking about Jesus Christ in verse 5. And Psalm 2.9 supports that, that he alone was born to rule all the nations. Now, the dragon, who is the dragon? Well, if we, we look again, it says there, there appeared in verse number 3, another one wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns and seven crowns upon his head his heads and he and, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour the, her child as soon as it was born so who is the dragon now first of all we need to, we need to understand this we have in our minds that the dragon is is satan and i, I believe that is who satan is but we take that picture of a dragon, we want to say that that's what Satan looks like. That Satan is this red individual that has these horns upon his head, and we give that 
picture. We, we see it every year at Halloween when kids are dressed up like uh, a little devil and they've got a pitchfork in their hands and they've got their faces painted red or maybe they're wearing a mask with horns. Um, the thing that we need to understand is that that's not the appearance of Satan. It's the appearance of Satan's character because his character is evil. And his character um, is something that is beyond what we can imagine as far as his ability and his power to cause suffering upon mankind. The seven heads, uh, the number seven, of course, is the number of completeness. So when it says seven heads, it's talking about Satan having complete intelligence. The seven crowns speak of his authority to rule, to have dominion, well beyond what we even think as far as his ability to have dominion. The ten horns speaks of great power that pierces, rips, tears in an evil way. Uh, he is the God of this world. Uh, he blinds the minds of those which believe not. Second Corinthians 4.4 4 tells us that. He is the prince of this world. John 12.31 and John 14.30 says that. He is the prince of the power of the air. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2 says that. He is the king of the king of a kingdom. Matthew 12.26 and Matthew 4.8.9 tell us that. And he has a grip on the whole world. 1 John 5.19 tells us that. Satan has incredible power. Uh, and so if you take the beauty of Satan and you take the power of Satan, it's no wonder the world's in the mess that, it, that it's in. It says that, verse 4, he drew the third part of the stars of heaven. What's that talking about? Where did Satan come from? Well, he came from heaven. He was an angel at one time. He was created by God to have incredible power and to be used by the Lord in such a mighty way. But he wanted to be equal with God. And so he rebelled against God and he took a third of the angels in heaven with him. They believed and they fell with him. And so those are now the, de the demons upon the earth who are under the power of God. Satan. And so uh, that's what this is talking about. And Satan's aim, again, if you see what it says, he's standing there before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, and he wanted to devour the child. And again, the child is Jesus Christ. That was Satan's, uh, that was his uh, goal, is to, to have the ability to take over Jesus and to kill Jesus when he came to the earth. Remember back when uh, Jesus was in the Garden of Eden, not Jesus, when Satan was in the Garden of Eden and he was talking to Adam and Eve and they had disobeyed, the Lord said to Satan, he said, you're going to crawl upon the ground the rest of your days. You're going to eat the dust of the ground. In other words, the Lord's saying, you're going to eat my dust because you will not have victory over me. And it said that, uh, you know, you're, you're going to cause pain to the child of the woman, talking about Jesus Christ that would come eventually, that he would be crucified. But the Lord said at the same time, but, you know, your head's going to be crushed. And meaning that the Lord is going to have the final say and he's going to have the victory in the end. Um, so Satan's aim is to destroy the woman Israel, but he's not going to. He's not going to have victory over that. The Lord's already given us that promise and he's already given us an understanding of what he is going to do. And we're reading about it here in Revelation. Soon, if you go to the end of Revelation, you're going to see that the Lord has a victory, that he's going to speak the word during the, the battle there of Armageddon. He's going to speak the word, and Satan's going to be done. He, along with the Antichrist, with the false prophet, they're going to be put away forever. Praise the Lord for that. God is good, isn't he? So that is what we're talking about here today. We're looking at the central characters in the Great Tribulation. So tomorrow we'll pick up the rest and we'll go forward with that. So let's pray together. Father, thank you, Lord, for understanding who this woman is. 
for understanding who this dragon is, for understanding who this child is, Father. And Lord, we know that you are that child, Father, born in Bethlehem. You as God put on flesh and you came and you dwelt among us. And you went to the cross of Calvary ultimately to give us the ability to have a relationship with you, Father, to take back dominion over the earth, Father. You have all power, all glory, all authority, Lord. Even though Satan is very powerful and Satan is very beautiful and men are drawn into him and men fail daily, Father, in their walk with you because they're attracted to the things of Satan and the things of this world. Help us, Father, to keep our eyes on Jesus. In your sweet name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. And I look forward to sharing with you tomorrow.